Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about fancy code, so let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, why is it that senior programmers use fancy style of programming which just overcomplicates the code without any real benefit and only makes it hard to follow for people new to programming? Lo parentheses, large gaps between books and production code. How should one learn it? Well, uh, this is sort of the one one of those situations where it sort of sucks uh, to be new, and it sucks mostly because you can't really. This very quickly becomes a political game for you, uh, unless you have coworkers who can back you up on this. This is uh, oh, this is this is always a difficult one. I would say that this is the this is the number one area where developers start clashing with each other which can lead to friction in the teams and friction between people and so forth and that is your style of coding is shit and mine is better or your style is too complicated etc etc and you are not willing to change for me because I'm new or I don't really know etc etc or another case your code is super complicated but I'm too intimidated uh, uh, as a junior to talk to this senior person who just fucks everything up and might not actually be as senior as they think they are because they're over engineering and things like that. It's a very difficult situation for you to deal with and I've been in these situations a few times. I've been in, in companies where people didn't give a shit about the code or tried to use a lot of fancy design patterns. I've also been in situations where the like the CTO loved functional programming so much that everything was a generic of a generic of a generic of a lambda and the the problem with these social situations is that it's very hard for you to make a case for change here because fundamentally what it comes down to is that this person even though you might think of them as senior might actually not be able to write simple code because they're not actually all that good at software development yet. This is that intermediary level that I like to tell people about where I say that you just got over the hump of being a junior where you just wrote stuff that sort of works and now you think that you're gonna get fancy because you're quote-unquote experienced and uh, in a few cases guys I've actually had to have fairly like basically talk to uh, uh, to managers about this and told them that the, I can't like the problem with this individual is that I can't make I, I, they can write their own code but they cannot adjust to anything else in other words unless they get to write their in this case this was a guy who just like we were talking about like went to the most extremes that you can imagine when it came to being dry and for those of you who work in TypeScript and you know how people can misuse the omit the pick the uh, union types and like deriving types and so forth and so forth you know how generic you can get where everything is like like it's hard to figure out what the interface actually has because there are so many type utilities that you can misuse if you don't really know how to or rather if you if your focus is to do something that might just make sense in your mind but doesn't really make sense to anybody else and when you get to a, a conversation with someone like that this is very difficult for some people because they, it's not like they're doing it to piss you off it is usually because they either can't do it in any other way or because they truly believe that this is the best way of doing things even if it means that other people don't really know what's going on etc 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 and so when you tell a person like that you need to simplify this well that's not something that a junior is going to do usually because you're going to as you said here in your question how should one learn it and the sad part is that there is nothing you can do start adding log statements is the like same thing as how do you learn how to deal with a really complicated system it doesn't have to be sophisticated or fancy it just has to be do something really complicated so you hit the books you start adding log statements you usually I do the tracing and this of course none of this has any tests of course because people who are really genius with fancy solutions they don't bother writing tests because that's for more normal muggles and the the reality is that here it is down to you reverse engineering what it's doing and if you're lucky you can ask for help but their answer might not actually be good
and in some cases they might not even like in some cases you might not even have a person there who can answer what does this code actually suppose what is it supposed to be doing and it might not even make sense and this is what I call the difference between true seniority and the uh, posers, the mid-level developers who by today, in today's world, call themselves seniors because they've managed to scrape together four years of experience, but they still write code uh, that someone who is quote-unquote a real senior basically has to rewrite for them because that's the problem that they introduce. In my little story, when I've dealt with developer, this specific developer, I had to, as I was saying, go to a man my manager basically say that uh, you're going to have to talk to this person because every time I try to adjust, like I tell him, like, you try to add some tests, he gets pissed off with me because he doesn't want to write tests because he doesn't like it. And here's the reason. The reason is because his coding style makes it basically impossible for him to do that. And he doesn't understand that. Because if you write code that is so advanced that you can't basically not write an efficient unit test for it yourself, then you have a problem, but he doesn't understand that. The overall system is suffering due to his like over abstraction, like all of these sort of styles that he's doing. This is one of those like, uh, guys, I usually don't promote people, promote the idea of firing people for being slow or for taking time or so, things like that, because you can teach people that. This is an exception to that. If you have a developer who has an attitude problem or a coding style that basically just adds work for the others in the team, you basically have to get rid of them, in my opinion, because it is exceedingly hard to train such an individual to change their style of working. If it can be done, you always give them a chance, of course. It's not like you just get rid of people, but if you can, it's great if you can, uh, if you can teach them. Otherwise, as I told my manager, I don't, like, uh, whenever he does, like, the, the code just bounces, and this is because I have seniority where I can tell the person, like, I, you have to redo this because it's basically, you have no test for it, so add that, and then he writes a bunch of tests, and like it's like tests are also hyper complicated. And I say I can't, uh, we can't maintain this. It's not going to scale to the next feature. I can sit down with you. We can do some pair program. You offer them help and so forth. But uh, at the end of the day, it comes down to do they actually have the ability to adjust in this situation? Just as you, as a junior, unfortunately, have to sort of figure out how this thing works because you can't pull rank on people when you're a junior software developer, which sucks. I could in this situation because I had the ear of the managers and I was supposed to be the tech lead and so forth and so forth. And these are things that I look out for. If you have people who write complicated code like this, as I said, it's not necessarily because they're very good. It might just be that they're actually just doing shit. That they, like they, as I've said before, guys, the pro if, if you have a solution that doesn't stand in proportion to the problem, it's most likely that you're incompetent. It's more likely that you are incompetent because you're applying a very sophisticated or very large solution to a simple problem. And that indicates that you don't actually know how to solve the problem efficiently. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, how do you learn code that the senior that wrote very sophisticated code made? Well, it's the same thing if they wrote shitty code because an overcomplicated solution is probably as shit as one that is just bad, what we know. These are subjective terms, of course, but it really comes down to that. Uh, if you're a junior software developer, it's very difficult for you because it's the same challenge as if you have to deal with just very badly documented code or badly written code, etc., etc. You start do, like you start trying to pull things apart. The thing that I usually do, I suggest that you, if you have that option, because sometimes you can't, which is sucky, where you have people who are like around and they're strongly opinionated, you can't just change the code. If you have the ability, try to just start writing some tests for the code itself, because that's the one thing that is very good with unit testing. It, that's at least what helps me when I deal with, especially when I take over a code base from someone who has done this, like really significant, as I was talking about the other coworker that I had, where we basically had to let him go, because we can't, I can't just keep, we can't keep this problem around, because it, it basically his style of coding makes it difficult for literally everything else to happen. And we can't raise quality if we can't write any tests. And if he doesn't want to adjust, we have to get rid of him. So when I had to go and take a look at all the code, I basically have to refactor fairly large amounts of that software. So in order to figure out what it actually does, I number one, learn the feature. What is the feature about? Not what that's, Don't just look at the code. What is the feature? What is the feature supposed to be doing? By just doing that, I figured out that actually we had tons of bugs in the implementations that he had made 
tons and tons and tons. Like uh, like the system was actually in a really bad state. I learned later that the management had actually been very unhappy with this. So now I know that I don't have to just maintain this basically pile of rubbish that has been created. I can figure out what does it do by moving it out into smaller pieces putting a few basic tests in place to make sure that you know the feature requirements of the feature not his implementation but the features what are the features those tests that I write checks that those features are working regardless of what his code is doing and then I re in some cases I have to basically rewrite the feature from nothing and in some cases I it could be salvaged I could make some tweaks here and there by just abstracting some stuff away and by doing that you basically divide and conquer you split things out a little bit I could actually by just that process of uh, adding tests to the code learn enough to understand the feature so that's my tip to you uh, use debug statements and in some cases don't be afraid to change code that is not good pick it apart put some tests on it and by just doing that you're probably going to understand a, li a little bit more about what it's actually doing and never underestimate understanding what the feature is about because you will be surprised how many times you learn what the feature should be doing and how it should operate and then you look at the implementation and you realize this feature this code doesn't actually reflect what it's the feature is have a great day